Welcome to Excalibur CCG TV. In this episode, we're taking a look at the new comics for July 3rd, 2013. That is coming right now. Hello, everyone. Thanks for pressing play. He's Randy. I'm Chris. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. And hey, listen, we understand that a lot of our viewers are busy. They're on the go. And I just want to remind you that we do have the MP3 of this episode available in the link below. Click on there. You can listen to it on your iPod while you're on the go if you don't have time to sit down and watch the awesomeness that is Excalibur CCG TV. Big week for comics this week. It's the beginning of July, so we had a very uh, heavy June there, full of comics every single week. So yeah. they're going to continue that uh, with us now in July. Exactly. Last week was a huge week. The, the last week of June was a huge comics week, and this week we got some good stuff coming out as well that you should be checking out, stuff that we've talked about before right. in previous videos and stuff, so <clears throat> we're just going to dive right on into it. What, what, what do you got going on? Well, speaking of stuff in previous videos, last week I mentioned uh, Thief of Thieves number 15. They pushed it back a week. It's coming out this week, so expect it in the comic shop this week. Cool. Don't have to say anything else about it because it's that good. We already talked about it. <laughs> uh, first up for me, we've got 10 grand number three. That yes. is the big one there. J. Michael Straczynski has been incredible with his storytelling. And while I'm not always the biggest fan of the Ashley Wood uh, style of art there, Ben Temple Smith seems to do it right for me yes. every single time. Yes. Uh, so... He, he just gives this eerie tone to the book, and um, I don't know what more I can say other than this is the top of the list, this is the best of the week kind of thing yeah. uh, for me. So, uh, and, and I'm glad you started with that because I had it on my list and I was thinking, wow, issue number three already? I know. So, I mean, Straczynski's got his act together so far with the publishing of this because we're getting steady issues. Right. The writing has been fantastic. The art totally fits, even it's even though it's different, dark and dirty. It been he's Temple Smith is killing it with the art. I don't know if it's uh, because Temple Smith's on board here, but this almost gives me kind of the same feel that I had when I read Fell yeah. from Warren Ellis and Temple Smith, and. Uh, it just, it, he, he gives that wonderful atmosphere and you get kind of this seedy um, community uh, city kind of thing. Everything doesn't seem real glamorous and, uh, you know, bright and shiny metropolis or, or you know, New York City right. when, you know, you see the Avengers flying through. It, it has this grittier kind of feel to it. Yes. And those are the type of stories I love. So and something else, and last thing I'm gonna before I, um, last thing I'm gonna harp on is sure. whenever we got the, whenever we got the first is, issue and and it even exposed more of this with issue number two, we're, we're meeting the main character years from the catalyst of what's caused all this. Right. So he's got some tricks up his sleeve. He knows how to deal with these demons and angels and everything else that he's encountering and he knows people right. which is really cool because in issue number two we got introduced to a special character with a special ability right that helped the main character out with what he was trying to do so it's like you're dropped into this you're not it's not an origin story you're no. you're into the you're in the fray uh, already i think that's when uh things like movies and books are often successful is when they just kind of drop you in there and they'll say we'll give you enough so that you're not scared of the unknown you know not knowing what's going on but we're going to give you enough mystery to it that you're going to get the backstory throughout not just all at once or not starting from point a and going to point b and going to point c you know that it's kind of a boring storytelling when you have it all the time from book to book exactly um the other the other thing um with this book is something that I was going to talk about, but now I totally remember or totally forgotten. So we'll just we'll move on to, to something else. If I remember, I'll throw it in there later. You move on. Okay. So it, it was going to be really profound, but now it's not. Whatever. Well, another book coming out this week that I'm looking forward to. I was impressed with the first issue of, of it is Daredevil Dark Knights. Yes. Number two, number one took me by surprise and. It's not that it was just 10 out of 10 or just mind-blowing, but it was so emotional uh, for me. And uh, it really pulled me into the story. It pulled me into the struggle that Matt Burdock was facing with the situation. And because I work in a hospital and I'm around a lot of similar things 
portrayed in the first issue, it really kind of resonated with me. And Lee Weeks' art is, he's one of the perfect artists for Daredevil, as far as I'm concerned. And he knocks it out of the park. So number two's hitting. I don't know what's going to happen with the second issue. I, I just, I don't really even care to know because I'm so on board with what happened with the first issue. So as a uh, comics reader who did not start reading from a young age, I uh, started in my late teens here. I was not familiar with Lee Weeks as having been this old artist. He was this guy who every now and then things I'd read, I'd suddenly see he's doing a a guest uh, story arc or something on on Incredible Hulk or on um, whatever other title. I just, I really remember his Incredible Hulk stuff that I would uh, pick up and read. And I always loved his art. And so for me, with this book, that art just blows me away. It is beautiful. But the other thing that really works with this story, and I think is oftentimes you need from a superhero comic, is that you get, you don't have a villain as the yeah. villain in this book. You yeah. have something else going. And so it makes, it's one of those things that you need to see that from the superhero, some heart from a book. And you're getting that in this, yes. uh, in this story. And so that to me makes it a really special comic. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a. There's not a villain. There's no. a situation. There, yeah, exactly. It's a, yeah, it's a situation. It, it, it's a believable situation mm-hmm. that they then take someone that's an unbelievable character and put them into yeah. the situation and say, "What are they going to do?" And and so it, it's very moving. Yes, uh, this is a this is a highly recommended book. Also, the regular Daredevil series. If you're not right. getting it, highly recommended. Mark Wade has been killing it on the regular Daredevil. Lee Weeks has been killing it. With, he's going to be. This is a an eight issue maxi series that's going to have various writers and artists. The first I, part I guess, is. Uh, I guess is it going to be in multiple parts with it? Because I know he's like the, on for the first three. I think he's doing Lee Weeks just doing the first three or four, okay. and okay. then and then some others are coming on board later on, if I'm not mistaken. But these ish, these Lee Weeks issues, check them out. Definitely check them out. Cool. Up for me, Satellite Sam number one comes out now. Satellite Sam is written by Matt Fraction. Howard Chaikin is the uh, artist on there. Fraction for me and for uh, a lot of other people, he can uh, really dive in and give you a great story. Or he can have something that is a little lukewarm. You know, it it has its moments and then it has some misses. Right here, I have all the confidence you're going to see the uh, first Matt Fraction I described. Because what we have is an independent comic from him. His Casablanca, or Casablanca, Casa, <laughs> Casanova right. was all over the place, crazy zaniness, wild storytelling, and uh, he has he has brought that to his Hawkeye comic, right, right. and his Hawkeye comic is very much so an independent comic style of storytelling. It's not a mainstream style that you see in most superhero comics, especially this last issue, if you've read that doesn't take a lot of time to read, but you have to go back and look at it to see what everything is that's going on with the Pizza Dog story. Pizza Dog. Uh, but so Satellite <laughs> Sam is going to be this independent style. He's going to have more freedom to do uh, things with his storytelling, and uh, it, it just seems like a killer concept for me. Give him a little bit of detail on the, the concept. Well, just Satellite Sam, aren't sure about yeah, it. it takes place back in the, it's in the, 50s, 50s or 60s. Period piece. Period piece by Matt Fraction, of course, about a character, a TV show character, Satellite Sam, that the actor who plays that character ends up murdered, ends up dead, and the son is the only one that thinks right. that he's murdered. The problem is his son's an alcoholic and he's a drunk. Right. The other thing is that the the pops there was found in not the best of situations. That's right. So. A flop house. <laughs> right. So. It's it's got all sorts of intrigue, murder, some uh, some probably some sex to it, some uh, whatever else, mature themes, uh, but it's going to be handled well. Most you know you get an image comic, and you're mostly going to have mature themes in it, and they just do a great job of uh, telling a, a really well-rounded story. Yeah. So I, I'm expecting that with this, and you know, Chaykin's, uh, uh pro there that always gives you great work with his story so yeah. I'm looking forward to that from him totally uh, out for me this uh, week we're taking a look at uh, also Green Arrow 22 
Yes. And with with the new creative team that came on board of Jeff, Jeff Lemire and uh, on uh, Andrea Sorrentino, they're just killing it. Right. They're just killing it. I don't know how many people I've uh, dropped this comic into their stack and said, this is a must read. Or people that said, oh, I'm dropping Green Arrow. This storyline is terrible. Well, you haven't read the latest storyline. You haven't read what Lemire's doing here. He's totally redefining this character, giving you something different, uh, you know, making this character worth reading again. Yes. And uh, so this it, it's going to continue with this issue. And I'm excited because this issue is going to introduce Count Vertigo. Right. Uh, into the new 52. And as far as uh, I can tell, I've always seen him more so associated with, like, Suicide Squad or... Uh, uh, who is of a Flash, different characters like okay. that. I've seen him pop up in the book, so I'm excited to see him facing off here against uh, against Oliver. This is something where usually Oliver's just kind of fighting another guy who's not really so much super powered, but uh, is more so on the level with him. Well, right. Now you've got a guy with superpowers. How's he going to stack up against that? I'm excited. And then, you know, and, and, and for those that don't know, if you're not going to, we highly recommend that you get on board the monthly issues. If not, then check out this first trade of when it's collected of right. this storyline. But Jeff Lemire has taken Green Arrow and destroyed him and is rebuilding him. I mean, right. he's taken away everything. He's not, he, he's not the rich, pretty boy. He, no. He's, he's now, he's, he, right now he's trying to survive. Right. And he's trying to find, he's trying to find some answers and a purpose and the way it is told has been excellent. There's been a lot of action, been some uh, uh, very highly skilled uh, villains for him to, yeah. to face off against and with more to come. They've and, taken his uh, origin story and they've unfolded that and given you completely new pieces to it that you didn't know existed before. And yes. you don't feel like it's forced. That's that's the talent. or. Yes. or that shows just how talented of a writer he is. He, he's able to bring something in there that wasn't there before, and you don't go, oh, well, that's just this guy's... I no, it feels like it's almost natural with how it's fit in there to yes. a story. And you don't have to have read uh, no. the new DC-52 Green Arrow from issue number one. I did not. I, I did not. <laughs> I only came on when Jeff Lemire came on, which was issue 17 or 18. Yeah, I think. Uh, one of those issues, and have been on board and happy with it ever since then. Yes. So... Yes, very much so. Um, onward. Deadpool kills Deadpool. Number one <laughs> comes out. This is apparently uh, the killology. I love that <laughs> the term. Killology. Coming to its conclusion with this. He finds or, or figures out there's one person he needs to take out, and that person is himself. So uh, we're going we're gonna to see tons of craziness here i don't know if there are like other versions of himself or if he's setting traps for it. i don't know if it's going to be kind of the old uh uh was it was it the inspector cluso that always had the the person there or kato to jump out and attack him in the pink panther i don't, I don't know what what's going to go on here with this how is he how is he going to kill himself who is himself that he's killing uh, that, yeah you know which self so, uh, <laughs> Daredevil fan, or Daredevil, uh, my names are all off today. Deadpool fans are going to love it. Uh, just when you say that, it makes me yeah. laugh, man. I, just oh, the whole I, idea. I just love to say killology. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. The word of the day, killology. Killology. <laughs> yeah. awesome. We'll do the, the Pee Wee's Playhouse and yeah, whenever we hear the. So, that's give, awesome. me, give me another one of your reads. Uh, uh, this is a continuation of a series that came out a, a couple of years ago, but now it's being continued from Avatar Press. It's Absolution Rubicon. Ah. Uh, a couple years ago, there was Absolution, written by Christos Gage. Uh, I'm not sure who the artist was at that time. I think it was Jason Burroughs, but I, I'm not sure. But it, it was basically the story of a superhero that couldn't handle, couldn't take it anymore. Just could not take it anymore and snapped and decided to start doing things his own way and put himself above the law. Right. Outside the law, everything. Extreme vigilante. I, exactly. And I liked it then. I'm going to check it out. With this new issue uh, one, Absolution Rubicon. So if you're like superheroes with an edge, Avatar always has an edge. So if you like that, that whole concept, you should check out Absolution Rubicon. Now, um, I, I I tend to be, I think, with my reading, a lot heavier of a Marvel reader. 
and I've, I've had some people say, hey, give DC a chance with uh, more of these titles, review more of them, t uh, tell us about more of them. We've got uh, Action Comics number 22 coming out here. This is uh, Lobdell and Kirkham on uh, board there with uh, the writing and the art chores. This sounds like a pretty cool concept where you have this alien race that shows up and they're saying, hey, we need someone to lead us. We need we need our king, our prince, our president, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what their terminology is in their their alien culture, but they had their sights set on Superman. It doesn't sound like they're they're out to you know take over the earth or anything like that. So I don't know what the huge conflict is. Okay. Uh, but you know, if I was Superman and I had these aliens approach us and say, hey, we want you to lead us, I might go, you know what? Sure, why not? <laughs> as long as there's that yellow sun there to exactly. superpower me, why not? <laughs> so uh, it's it you know should be interesting to see what's the conflict there, uh, what goes on, what's the resolution in this storyline. But uh, you know, Man of Steel has been the talk of many many people right now. We've got this great little um, issue here to check out from Action Comics. Cool. Uh, speaking of more DC, we talked about this before and. The, uh, the first issue of it all happening is, is upon us this week with uh, Trinity of Sin. We got uh, Pandora, number one, coming mm. out. And this is leading up uh, to the Trinity War that's going to be happening mm -hmm. and taking place in all the Justice League titles. So this, number one, Trinity of Sin, number one, Pandora, uh, focusing on Pandora. There is supposed, in case you don't know, there is supposed to be an event that causes all three of the Justice League teams to become at odds with each other. And Phantom Stranger, Question, and Pandora are all going to be a part of that. And this is starting it off this week with this number one issue of Trinity of Sin, Pandora. Uh, if you're already reading uh, the Justice League books, then you might have a, a, a little idea of what's going on. But we're about to get it full swing and underway with all of it, starting with this issue. So if you want to be on board the Trinity War events happening with DC Comics, because after this is an even bigger event that we'll save... Uh, for for some other videos because it's going to be huge for DC later on this year. So uh, definitely check out Trendy of Sin Pandora number one so you can be on board at the ground floor pretty much of what's going to be happening with the Trinity War coming to the Justice League titles here That's in just right. a few weeks. Yeah, sounds good to me. Yep. Um, also, a new number one that's coming out here to check out, um, Avengers AI. So we've had everything kind of the dust settle from Age of Ultron. And we have Hank Pym that's, you know, is last in last week's uh, Avengers or, or Age of Ultron number 10 AI kind of say, well, this is where I'm going to put my foot down. This is my place in the universe. This is what I've got to do. And now you've got him putting together a team. On this team, you've got some new characters. You've got old characters. You've, you have the Vision on there. You've got a Doombot on there. Uh, Victor Mancha, for everybody who loves the Runaways, you've got one of the Runaways on there. And uh, just tons of other characters. Sam, uh, Sam Humphreys is going to be uh, bringing you this new book that uh, is, is going to basically be uh, robots gone wild almost I think there <laughs> you know we, we you think that the universe would be a little fearful after everything that just happened in the uh, age of Ultron but you're going to get it just like in your face with uh, tons of robots tons of robots there so I, I don't know if the other new characters are all necessarily the the shield agent and everybody are necessarily robots in it but uh, they're there so we're going to see uh, just what Humphreys gives us with the uh, story and if you like doom bots Rumor is that the Doombot steals the show. Does it really? Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So that, that, so that should be fun and interesting. Uh, we talked about this next comic in, in one of our previous videos, but Dark Horse is bringing back their superhero universe, and they're launching it this week with Catalyst Comics number 1, written by Joe Casey. That's right. With some of your favorite top-tier independent artists like Paul Pope. Uh, Paul Pope's on the, the cover art, but uh, yeah, Raphael Grandpa is another one that's doing the cover art. The guys inside are some of the, the indie fellows, and uh, their their names I'm not familiar with yet, but I'm going to be familiarizing myself with them because uh, just the, the little preview that I've seen of it looks great. Yeah, the covers definitely, the, the rocking yeah. covers. But Joe Casey is bringing back this Superhero Universe 4 Dark Horse Comics, and this is part of their initiative. By the way, an aside, 
Dark Horse is going to do more with Bloodhound. Yes! Ah, I had so, not seen that yet. Awesome. I did read about that. As we talked about that in the previous video. Sorry for that. It was Dark Horse. It made me think about it. <laughs> anyway, Catalyst Comics number one, Joe Casey. Various artists. It's going to be a nine-issue maxi series bringing back Dark Horse's uh, staple uh, st staple of heroes that, they, that they've had in the past. Titan, Amazing Grace, several others kind of reinvented and re-envisioned by Joe Casey yeah. to be brought back. Mm -hmm. And if you like uh, like an indie edge to superheroes, if you like Joe Casey, you know it's going to be different, then you're definitely going to want to check out Catalyst Comics number one. Yeah, I think uh, I think Dark Horse has seen that Valiant has been successful in kind of re-envisioning their characters from the 90s and bringing them back. So they're taking these characters from the 90s that they had as well and bringing them back. Uh, you know, maybe we're going to get to see barbed wire again. I don't know. <laughs> uh, just no Pamela Anderson. No, okay. no, no. No, none of that. Bad thoughts, uh, bad thoughts. We've got a, another uh, number one that kind of crept in here that's going to be coming out. Uh, for anybody who's a fan of uh, that, uh, what, Showtime serial killer, uh, Dexter number one is coming out there from Marvel Comics. So, And the great thing about this is it it's kind of takes this whole story of... Uh, the what is he he's he's a criminal uh, he's a blood spatter yeah guy. blood spatter that it is also happens to be a serial killer well this isn't going to be so much about him and the serial killing he's going to a high school reunion or right. college reunion or a reunion and he's finding out that there's this other serial killer out there that's just like crazier than he is and so he's <laughs> he's having to uh to to i guess stop a serial killer that's it's kind yeah. of crazy there uh how they're turning the whole concept on its ear with it but cool. uh seems like a, a fun read for uh any dexter fans anybody that likes the uh the edge that they push and anybody that hasn't read it or haven't or hasn't watched the show to actually check this out totally avengers 15 hits this week and I, i'm i can't praise what hickman's doing enough on the series, if you know by now, we both are fans of what's going on. We saw in the last issue where where the spores that have developed and the, the various mutations and stuff that have sprung from them are now trying to send a signal. Mm -hmm. One got through, and now we're going to be seeing what the consequences are, hopefully, of that in this new issue. But it's this is awesome. You should be on board. This is leading up to the Infinity event uh, that we've been talking about. It will be part of it in some small way of course infinity is going to take place on earth and in space yeah, so all over the place all over the place and so be sure and check it out if you're not on board avengers and new avengers you should be checking this stuff out it's good check stuff it out totally uh speaking of space and the avengers marvel has guardians of the galaxy tomorrow's avengers a one shot coming out here that's just going to help give little stories to familiarize yourself more so with uh drax gamora rocket and different uh the different characters you're seeing in guardians of the galaxy as far as i know they are new stories that they're going to have this uh the star lord comic that came out this last week was uh reprint reprinting old material so that people could familiarize themselves with who star lord is but now we're taking a look at these other ones it's all at the helm of uh bendis so okay uh it's it's him with some of his uh uh, old pals there, I believe. Uh, I believe I saw Oming as uh, one of the people okay. on board uh, drawing. So cool. uh, that's one to check out. Also, uh, we have number one coming out for Superior Foes of Spider-Man. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that is going on in the background. Uh, someone's <laughs> talking. Superior Foes of Spider-Man. This is going to be Nick Spencer writing it. He's uh, right now doing the Secret Avengers. And it will be one of my favorite artists, Steve Lieber, yep. doing the art. I, I loved his work on uh, Whiteout with uh, Greg Rucka there. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's that's going back a ways. But they're going to take a look at all these different foes here that have, I guess, faced off against this new Superior Spider-Man. Right. Maybe their new <laughs> attitude or look at uh, w just what they think of this new Spider-Man. Uh, should be a, a fun read there just to kind of get a different viewpoint, not the superhero's viewpoint. Why not? Because we've been getting a different viewpoint in Superior Spider-Man exactly. for a while now exactly. with uh, Doc Ock's viewpoints. So, yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, and for those who don't know, uh, he's Spider-Man has, Superior Spider-Man has 
hurt some villains and ticked off some villains and given them something to think about. Extreme measures. Exactly. So this should be a really interesting series to see how, if they're coming together to try to take them down or, it, or just what, what, what it is. Yeah. yeah. Are they sitting around playing poker going, oh, I can't stand when he busted my jaw or, you know, what is it? I don't know. Because he doesn't just hang them up with the note in the, the no. webbing anymore for the police. He, no. uh he, and, uh, and you know what? The police aren't too uh, sad to see that that's the, the case. They, they're loving them. <laughs> they are. They are loving them. So that's another cool one that you should be checking out. Uh, also out this week, if you loved Marvel's What If series that they used to put out on a regular basis, well, you'll get a four-issue miniseries starting this week with What Is. I'm sorry, with What If Avengers vs. X-Men. That's right. And this is a different take on with the storyline from last year of Avengers vs. X-Men and the consequences of that. This is what if someone else got the powers of the Phoenix right. Force. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's someone that you're familiar with. So if you like those what if stories and, and uh, love the whole alternate take on what could have been, it's just a, a four issue series. Check it out. Eh, have fun with it. The, the thing that's uh, probably the saving grace with that is uh, Jimmy Palmiotti's doing the writing on okay. that. And Palmiotti, one of the things that he knows how to do is take and write a short, nicely packaged, fun story. He is great with just action, with just keeping it rolling there. You don't have uh, downtime and just kind of like dead air kind of moments right. with him. So uh, you're going to get a good fun read with this one. Very cool. Uh, we've got a lot of pulp action going on here this week. We've I got, uh, yeah. yeah, Black Bat number three is coming out. Miss Fury number four. Mark Wade's Green Hornet number three. And we have the Owl number one. And the Owl number one looks like they're they're doing similar takes with a lot of these other characters. And somehow he's in the current time. You know, he's, he's appeared in the current time. I don't know if they're going to have a big lead up as to, you know, all these people getting together going, Hey, I remember you from 60 years ago. What are we doing here now? Uh, uh, come here often. <laughs> yeah, come here often. I, I don't know uh, what's, what's the deal there. But... These books have been catching on. A lot of people are loving uh, what's going on with these pulp and golden age characters here. Oh. So you've got a whole lot of uh, goodness, golden age goodness, pulp goodness here uh, this week. Cool. Very cool. Uh, another one for me. If you're a fan of what Marvel has been doing with the Wizard of Oz books. Oh, I am. Absolutely. That, uh, Emerald City of Oz number one hits this week. Same creative team. Yes. So you got Scotty Young. Scotty Young on the art and who's writing? It's um, Eric Shanauer. Okay. And Shanauer is one of the foremost authoritative figures on uh, Oz. Okay. Any any sort of comic that is produced in, in from any company usually has him or his partner as a uh, consultant. Okay. With it, so uh, they and they have done. These stories have been about as true to the book as they possibly could be. Mm -hmm. So this one involves, uh, finally, Annie M and uh, Uncle... What's what's his uncle? I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the... Say that again, Comic God. Uncle Cy. <laughs> hey! <laughs> That's not Uncle Cy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Rule number it, one. It, it has her aunt and uncle actually journeying to Oz this time. So that's the first time uh, okay. you'll get to see that. And uh, if you have not read it before, okay. and um, should be should be a good one. I'm always I love those. Yeah, series. this is an award winning series. Yeah, uh, the pre previous volumes have uh, been award winning. Also, uh, they're also great for kids, young yes. teens, and, and kids as well. So if you need, if you're thinking of something for your niece, nephew, your own children. This is a great way to get them on board. If they've already seen Wizard of Oz, I mean, they've you know they've had a taste of it all, and here it is in comic book form. There you go. Right. We uh, we might be running a little long here, so I'm going to do a little quick little DC roundup here. Yeah, go ahead. We've got Batman Inc. number twelve coming out. This is uh now we're now we're continuing with uh, seeing uh, Bruce Wayne wanting to exact his revenge on Talia okay. there for this death. Um, we've got Batwing number 22. This has been Palmiotti and Gray on that. They've taken and given us a new Batwing that has, uh, a, he's a new character, but he has a close association with Bruce Wayne, not Batman, with Bruce right. Wayne. Right. And uh, so it's it's been flying off the shelves here. Bat flying off the shelf. Uh, it's been flying off the shelf. Uh, it's been a popular read uh, with that. I think that DC was smart to make that move. 
Uh, we have Earth 2, number 14, coming out. I'm excited because this sees your heroes, uh, the Flash, the Green Lantern, and Dr. Fate now going and facing off against Steppenwolf uh, there. And this has been easily one of DC's top series uh, with James Robinson writing this. So we're going to start to see this big war. And I think you're going to see uh, Wonder Woman's daughter Fury being involved in with, in this somehow. My guess is that eventually she is going to be part of this group. They don't have a name yet. Kind of the old Justice Society, but that's not their name. Okay. And uh, for people who have been reading it and loving it, movement number three comes out. We just had a very familiar face from the Wildstorm universe show up at the end of the last issue there. And uh, so fans of Gen 13 might want to check this out to see who that character is. <laughs> and uh, it's written by Gail Simone, so it's going to be solid writing. Cool. So that's a little DC roundup. Give me something else uh, or a little roundup of some that you have there. Uh, for, for me, some other things I'm looking forward to, we have Uber number three coming out yes. from Avatar. Uh, I, and Kieran Gillen is on that. Kanan White's the artist. This is this is World War II with superpowered Nazis okay. uh, looking at uh, turning the tide of the war. It, this is of course fiction, so, you know, fiction. But uh, Kieran Gillen has really put a lot into this. You get a lot of you get a lot of history, and yeah. you get a lot of uh, 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 political intrigue and drama mixed in with the superpowers because it's not super heroics no. it's superpowers involved uh with these uh superpowered nazi soldiers that are that are turning the tide for hitler during world war ii so it's been very interesting i've been digging it i'm on board for it for now uh also suicide risk number three comes out mike carey's uh, new book at boom studios about a cop that's in a world where people are getting superpowers as like drugs off the street and more people are becoming criminals and villains instead of becoming heroes. And one police officer decides he has to do the very same thing. Right. Well, not not turn a villain. Not but. turn a villain, but he has to get power. Yeah. He, he wants but to be able to fight. It almost seems like there's something about when they gain these powers that that's turning them this. Or, or uh, that they're not going, okay, now that I've got these powers, let me choose this or that. It seems like it's kind of swaying them because yeah. even the heroes tend to to then turn towards the the villainous side there. exactly so yeah um, yeah so those are those are two other ones that i'm looking forward to this week yeah. also uh from boom studios got deathmatch it's another one i've been reading from uh boom studios paul jenkins carlos uh magna if i'm not mistaken uh on the art and uh this is this series is what you would love to see marvel and dc do do marvel and dc comics do and have just a uh, battle Royale with all their heroes or whatever and see who would survive. But if it was Marvel or DC, they'd, you know, punch, 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 fight, 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 and then go, oh, wait, there's someone else controlling us or there's a reason why. And so they turn and, and you know, nothing actually happens. But you've, I mean, it's called Deathmatch for a reason yes. in this book. Yes, yeah. Uh, so they, they give you all that you want with like seeing characters who probably are archetypes of the characters you're familiar with exactly having it out to the ultimate result there yeah uh, yeah and people are actually dying and which uh, is for, the ultimate result i was just referring to. people are dying these arc archetype characters of, of of superheroes and villains that you're familiar with because heroes and villains involved uh, yeah and uh they're dying and and they're also they're also whenever they face each other for this death match they're 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 not controlled they're they're there's they're doing it for a reason they are actually doing it for a reason there is some slight control going on with everything else going on but it's still been interesting to see and the storyline uh we had a couple of, in the last issue we had a couple of uh twists and turns that popped up so i'm excited to see where that goes so, way to go paul jenkins way to go paul jenkins but that's really wrapping it up for me man it's, that's, that's it yeah it's a heavy week we could really talk in detail about everything we're trying not to make it too much uh, for you guys there. Yeah, so. Exactly, exactly. So that's it for me. Is that for you? Yeah, that's it for me. Lots of goodness to read this week. Lots to check out. Uh, lots of number ones there. So, um, you know, anybody who comes in and says, oh, well, I don't have much there. 
I can find something for you to read. Randy can't buy you, find you something to read. And the word of the week is Killology. Killology. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But uh, that wraps it up for this week, guys. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Click that subscribe button below if you're not already a subscriber. Click the like button below. If you enjoyed it, if we informed you or entertained you, we had to have entertained you somewhat if you're this far along in the video. <laughs> so, but also remember, tell your friends, friends, anybody that's related, uh, anybody that you know, loves comic books that we're doing this show and that even if you can't watch the video, you don't have time to sit down and watch the video, we do have the MP3 available for you to download just below in the description below and spread the word. If you're not here locally, we wish that you were. Shopping here at Excalibur Comics, Cards, and Games here in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Texarkana. That's right. But if you're not at these locations, find a great shop. And, hey, if you don't have a great shop near you, go to our website, give us a call, and see if there's something that we can do to help you out because we'd be more than willing to do that. That's it for this week. Until next time, take care, everyone. Killology. Bye.